To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 23, Jacob, he's a real character. Even though he's the second patriarch, Yitzhak is not long for this book and he quickly vacates the premises for the next star of the Bible, Yaakov, also known as Jacob. Yaakov breaks the mold of the biblical characters we knew up to now, the solid, silent, obedient types. Yaakov is a man of an entirely new spectrum of character traits, many of them contradicting. He's shrewd, he's a go-getter, a mommy's boy, a thief, a liar, a labor activist, a man in love, a hard worker, a con man, and a negligent parent among other things. So forget all the characters we talked about up to now, because in season three of Genesis, we have more details, more plot twists, more dialogues, and more memorable one-liners that last for millennia. Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. And this week we want to give a shout out to Rachel and Dushi Shon. Shon? Rachel oh, and sure. Dushi Shon, I know them, I know, I know Dushi. Hi Dushi, thank you very much. So ask them how they pronounce their name, maybe. <laughs> maybe I should. <laughs> uh, thank you for supporting thank our project. You. Okay, so this uh, Jacob fella, we're going to briefly recap yeah. all that he did, and then we're going to extrapolate from that what kind of character he is, what were the, tri- the, the writers trying to do. Yeah. He's, uh, let's say, a jack of many traits. Traits. Oh, nice. I thought it was a mispronunciation, but no, it was a joke. (laughs) 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 But to be fair, it could have been a mispronunciation. Okay, so let's recap him a little bit. He has a magical birth, kind of like his dad. Yeah, uh, and even a double magical birth. A double magical birth. It is known among the world and among uh, smart people smart men, men of science, that uh, in order to be able to be a founding father, your mother needs to be barren. So, of (laughs) course, there's a magical birth. There's a kind of an explanation on his name. I ain't (laughs) buying it. Yeah, Yaakov means he will follow because he holds the akev, Mm -hmm. the heel heel of Esav, who is the twin who is Mm -hmm. born first. So also akev, Yaakov, to follow. He follows Yaakov, he will follow. Yeah. So he's the second son, but uh, he's the major character. So, he's, he, so he has to uh, lie and cheat his way mm-hmm. to get what is owed to his brother, yeah. which, is, which he does uh, in a very harsh manner, an indefensible manner. He lies to his dad yeah. in order to get the, the special blessing, conspires with his mom, Rivka. You said that Jacob is kind of a new character. He breaks the mold. He's kind of a trickster, among other things. But his main rise to glory story was through trickery. Yes. And this is kind of, I believe, it's some kind of a special power that uh, prominent men had in the ancient world. You had strength. And you had brain power. It's like a distinction that was already made back then. So the Jacob, his hero heroism is through trickery. Like if you imagine Loki, maybe from the Viking mythology and maybe Odysseus in some ways. Mm -hmm. He's unlike Achilles, who is more strong and uh, very emotional. Odysseus is more Mm -hmm. rational and very trickery. Here it's interesting to contrast Yaakov with his granddad, Abraham, Abraham, it's like they're not part of the same story. Yeah. He's honorable. Abraham is honorable. Mm-hmm. Yaakov is dishonorable. Very clearly dishonorable. He and will Abraham lie and cheat. He's known by his honor. Abraham is not that he's honorable because he read the story and you got to the conclusion that, yeah, yeah, yeah he acts honorably. No, he's known by his but honor. But he doesn't that's do anything name. that is dishonorable. He seems like a mensch, like a stand up guy. Yaakov, you yeah. just read the story. He, he lies to his dad several times and just and even even later on so he conspires with his mom in order to be sent away because his brother now is mad at him because he stole, he stole his blessing yeah his place in the world yeah 
So he like conspired with his, uh, with his mom to make uh, Isaac uh, tell uh, Yaakov, go to Haran, to whatever, my wife's uh, brother, yeah. where I found, yeah. we met them <laughs> in Genesis chapter 26, go there, stay there. Yeah. And there he has, has all kinds of shenanigans with Lavan. And then when he comes back, he's afraid that his uh, brother will kill him because yeah. his brother is mad. So he has to plot all kinds of moves to manipulate. So there's another element of storytelling here that is more profound. It's like you can see some kind of a tradition maybe here because you have like brotherly relationship. And it, why it's kind of a tradition? Because it's like a retelling of the Cain and Abel story through your founding father. So you can hypothesize that the writers of the story had some kind of a prototype of that kind yes. of story through Cain and Abel. And, and there's also uh, Abraham and uh, Lot and Yitzhak and Ishmael. Cain and Abel had a beef, but Abraham and Lot, their people had beef, but their relationship as brothers is not like Lot yeah. was envious of Abraham because no. he was more no, sacred. It was solid. Yeah. And here you can see a drama. You can see drama between two brothers. Initiated by the hero of the story. Yeah. He's clearly the bad guy. We're going to go into detail in, in the future episodes. But basically, this is like a manipulation of uh, like a point of view manipulation. The only reason that we are for Yaakov is because we're being told his story yeah. through his perspective and but in the story itself god makes deal with him yeah with the, same, the same words used for isaac and abraham so yeah. but yeah exactly but if you judge him by his actions like the way his story starts i'm like this man is a sociopath <laughs> okay just <laughs> just to make my point and Yaakov Nezid, he prepares a stew he stews a stews it's very silly. <laughs> but first of all, he said, please give me, no, please, give me of this stew because I'm very, very hungry. It's like he's saying, give me from this red, red. Red, red, because Esav is a dom. A yeah. dom is, is, in, is it's the same similar to the red. word uh, red, a dom. So he has red hair, but we're going to talk about and call this. This is very silly, but we're going to talk about it later in details. But so he comes in and says, I am tired. Give me this too. And Yaakov, just without missing a beat, <laughs> yeah. he's like, give me your inheritance. <laughs> Sell me your inheritance. Whoa, 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 whoa. He had it like ready <laughs> to... It's not like a, what are you willing to give uh, to me in yeah. exchange? No, he's like, he had it ready there, yeah. right there. Give me your inheritance. And then his brother said, I am going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very desperate. Uh, uh, why do I need my inheritance? So he's stupid. He, like we're being so either he's, stupid or naive. He's very naive, naive, like, but on the spectrum of, stu of, of stupid naive. Yeah. So he's the polar opposite of, of uh, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob is like ultra smart and cynical. And Esau is also stronger yes. and more manly, manly, quote unquote. Yes. He has more hair on his body. He's very hairy. He yes. <laughs> and and he hunts. Jacob yes. stays at home with his mother. And this is why Isaac prefers Esau because yeah. he's a hunter. Yeah. That's what we're told. So we're told. That so there's another layer of drama here. Jacob is not only the second son. He also has issues with his masculinity. Yes. So there's another layer of drama and character depth. We talked about the directions, northwest, yeah. east stuff. So here you have Yama, mm. watery, water, like Ah, the Ah is means yeah. you're going somewhere, it's all over the yeah. story. Harana, Yerushalayma, yeah. whatever. Yama, like the sea, is west. The Kedma, we mm -hmm. said Kedem, ancient, forward, For east. east. Vetsafona, here they use north. And what is south? Negba. Negba. Where the Negev is, the where desert. the desert. Yeah. This specific desert. Yeah. This specific desert. Yeah. So this story is very, 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 very local. And it's interesting how the first creation story is by the same people of Jacob. Yeah. We and didn't mention that. We didn't mention that. This is like, so the very distant God that they imagine is contrasted that a, a million times falls 
with a very intimate look at all the faults yeah. of their hero while with the Jew the Judeans it's the opposite they're a very personable god who just like you know does acts first things not later. the Judeans the J- J- Judeans the Judeans the Judeans the Jehovians the Jehovians yeah the Jehovians so they imagine like uh yeah. you know a god a you can talk yeah. to a father wa- yeah a father who walks and yeah. smells and is angry and makes who mistakes you, yeah. but their patriarch He's like super straight and distant. So it's like uh, the opposite. Like Jacob should be like a Yehovah, Yahwist creation that would align. It's very, it's weird. Maybe no. Maybe the fact that they imagine a strict father who can uh, explode at any second uh, because he offended him or something uh-huh. like that. Then the, the product of this fatherly <laughs> education will be an obedient father. honorable oh. son if you have a distant father that only created uh, oh. everything equal so logically you, ha- so you have room to you have be whatever you want to yeah. be you have uh, and also you can use your brain this is more of a cerebral uh, wow. god yeah, yeah. created uh, logically he, he said this is good good is not like a moral judgment it's good like it it's works mm. but there's also kind of an how he pop I believe that if you are a believer you And Jacob is your founding father then th- the thing that he does are not necessarily evil in some level they conf- you are confronted with your own morals basic some morals. ways basic morals you yes. like your dad this is never good but in some ways Yahweh still blesses Yaakov he's the blessed one and Esau Esav, is later the father figure of our most hated enemy is the Amalekites Uh, Malika so, come from Esav? Yeah, so oh, there's, yeah, a, yeah. there's a default bias here to hear those stories through the character that you admire. He's the father of your own, lin- your own blood. Yeah. The things that he does are cool. Just to go back on one of the premises of this podcast and over like, uh, the way you read the Bible, you have two traditions being combined in this book into one. You have a northern, you have the yeah. southern, you have the northern more cosmo- cosmopolitan commercial, uh, agricultural. Yeah. More uh, influenced by its surroundings. Uh, ur- proto-urban uh, yeah. kingdom. And you have the more conservative. Uh, Highland, Highland people. Highland people and desert people and who are less successful. And then you combine those two. Yeah. If you have the ancient story of your own father tricking his dad, that dad can be Abraham. Abraham. Exactly. Dad would be like, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, let's That's add someone in the, in the middle yeah. and let's not think too much of him. Yeah. So we're not emotionally tied to him and we are strictly with Jacob's point of view. Yeah. Because if you would tell the story of Jacob through Isaac's point of view, oh my goodness, yeah. they go into detail about the lying. Wow, yeah. wow, 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 wow. We're going to talk about that in uh, the next or the, yeah. the one after that episode. And it's very interesting what you said. And if you're looking for some kind of a rationale, If you look at Jacob's character as an ambivalent character who does good as well as bad, mostly bad, and it confronts you, the listener, with your own morals because you were supposed to like Jacob, but he does bad things, so what's up with that? And you accept the fact that the stories themselves as a code as like a canon were written and compiled much, much later, probably in the kingdom of Judea, which was were the southerner Conserv- traditions conservatives yeah they came from the you said two traditions i imagine like 20 traditions yes two yes. major ones yes, maybe yes, more yes. popular but and also like with 30 dif- traditions yeah. and even yeah. with them different strands yeah. correct then if you imagine that the people who constructed the canon with the, all the stories and rewritten them and maybe added isaac or stuff like that then they have kind of an interest or a bias against yes. Jacob yes because his tradition yes. is they don't have his tradition is foreign is from the north yes maybe they, they don't have an uh, emotional connection with Jacob they can touch Jacob quote-unquote they uh, can yeah. uh, also maybe this is why they picked Jacob maybe they, they had uh, several options uh, with uh, fathers and uh, mythical uh, people that uh, those northerners uh, You know look back to yeah. and we're, like, we're gonna pick this one because yeah. he's gonna look really bad yeah. compared to Abraham that's good way it may be because uh-huh. if you look at the stories again those are not epic stories in the same way that the Odyssey or the Iliad were or Gilgamesh or other epics from you know even India or China these are, are not great men 
who conquer, who speak, who reach the heavens or oh. cheat death. No, he's a very esoteric. He fights with an angel next, next yes. to a river. He Even if you look only at the Bible. And now we look back with nostalgia to the story of Abraham. It looks super epic yeah. compared to this one. Yeah. There's a city destroyed. Yeah. He almost kills his son. Yeah. He tries to save his brother. He wants to have he a negotiates son. With negotiates with Yahweh. Negotiates with Yahweh. Here, this is just like he puts some stones and then how, how will I make my brother not angry at me? Yeah. How will I steal the cattle from my uncle because now I claim that he underpaid me? All kinds of like, the weirdest, most specific shit ever. And this is... Very clear why Jacob is not like this iconic character because... Uh, <laughs> But he's still a character and that's the main point of this episode is to emphasize the fact that Abraham, Noah, even Adam and Eve in some way they are all missing characters. They don't have quote-unquote character development. They don't have like a profound depth to their characters. Because there are conflicts in life, the conflicts that are being told, except from the conflict if you kill your son or not. And even that, he accepts the fact that he needs to kill his son. They didn't yeah. write like an inner monologue. But And now you have a, a character, a real character. He cheats. He loves. He worked wow. for his brother, in for his uncle out of love. He's not such a good parent yes. because uh, his, <laughs> his uh, brother, son, son. Bro sons are yeah. fighting and uh, yeah. cheating. Maybe yeah, they learned something from me. Uh, killing. <laughs> killing. Later, when he and Asav meet, it's an emotional yeah. thing. It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's telling novella like. It's like, yeah. it's not a mythology and it's not like a divine. Right. It's just they meet and they had a beef and Jacob thought one thing and Asav thought one thing and then they met and there was like, like a, a moment of tension, but then they fell on yeah. each other's neck. Denouement. Right, it's called like when you ease the, the tension. It's a very modern method of writing. Yeah, yeah very modern. modern. It's, 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 a trope in, uh, it's a trope in Hollywood also. When uh, you, our hero meets like a character that they don't know and then they meet each other and they have this hateful look like they're about to kill each other, yeah. but then they hide. Ah, like, yeah. ah, ah, you know, yeah. a, it's a trope. It's all over. Uh, Here is not a trope. Though. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, the divine parts. It feels like they were just like forced in in order to say, ah, by the way, Yahweh with him, yeah. God is with him, everything will be fine. Yeah. Like, he does this because he's the chosen one. But, this, but if you take away the divine part, this is like uh, a guy going around and has all kinds of like mini going around personal in the north. adventures. That's awesome. That's awesome. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.